Well, those of you who are taking communicative abilities in English to the semester, this week we've been focusing on using Cornell Notes and trying to evaluate, actually analyze a, a text. And this is uh, something I'd like for you to use when you're looking for articles for the essay for this unit. I am going to share with you here a, an alternative. There are many different varieties of Cornell Notes if you look online. In fact, I've included a, a search, a YouTube search and a DuckDuckGo image search if you want to uh, find additional information about the uh, Cornell method. Here you'll see a lot of uh, examples of Cornell Notes. Most of them are fairly similar. There are some slight variations, but you can find, I think, a, a format that works for you. I've also included a version of one that we've been uh, that we originally worked on. This is the Word document here. So if uh, if this format works for you, you can continue using this Word document. This is a slight variation on Cornell Notes. Here at the top, we have the topic, the title, the theme, or the objectives. Think about which of these or a combination of these are most appropriate when you're filling out your Cornell Notes. Remember that the Cornell Notes is linked to one, one source. Okay, so if you find one article, then you can complete the Cornell Notes format for that, that one article. When you come across another article, you'll have another set of Cornell Notes. And I would fill out, again, one format uh, per article. Here you can have uh, your information. Okay, so you hear this is your information re relevant to the course that you're taking, the subject, um, maybe the date that you got the information. And here we have the essential or overarching question. Here we have a section along the left-hand side of your, your sheet Cues, questions, main ideas, analytic memos, keywords. There are, like I said, a variation of how you can complete this section. But in order to complete this section on the left, you need to have completed the notes section. That includes the details, the examples, the facts, the statistics, the conclusions of the uh, paper. I've also included tips here if you're using Cornell Notes in your classes with your uh, professors that... You could also use the same format when you're taking notes based on what's being said in class. So here you would have information what the uh, professor said or what he or she uh, wrote on the board. But once you've completed the notes section, then you can go back here and ask main questions that are relevant to the, uh, the, the notes that you have here. Maybe you write it in the form of a main idea. Maybe you write it in the form of an analytic memo, a reflection, how this relates to your, your thesis, for example, if you're writing an essay. Certainly keywords, and maybe they're new uh, to you, so maybe you are writing some notes to yourself. Maybe you need to investigate some of these keywords further. Those are all potential types of uh, information that you, that you can include here. Then along the bottom, you have the summary. What did you learn from this, having read the article or from the class itself? Some main takeaways, some general conclusions, what you got from uh, completing this information here. And then in the case of uh, an article that you find online, I would always include the URL here at the bottom. In fact, maybe I'll add that here, URL. Okay, now if this is if you're using this to take notes, of course, maybe you, you don't have this. Uh, may, you could include information that links to what's being said here, perhaps. But certainly, I would uh, get in the habit of uh, copying and pasting the URL in the moment that you're completing this. I would also always download the PDF article and keep it uh, in a an organized folder someplace so that you can access it easily. So that you don't have to go and try to look for it later. So here I have a, a variation. If this works for you, feel free to complete th this format. If you would rather stick to the format that we've been working on this week, that's fine. If you find another format that even works better, then by all means, choose one 
that uh, that works for you. The idea of Cornell notes, the Cornell method is uh, fairly standard. There's not a lot of variation, but there are some. And so feel free to choose the one that's, uh, that works best for you. And here are some videos. If you need further clarification, if you want further explanation as to how to use the Cornell method, you're encouraged to check out these videos. So this week we're going to be focusing on begin reading articles that relate to our thesis. We need to come up with a problem statement, a thesis statement as we did, as we've done in the past, and come up with some three, some key points in our thesis statement that will later develop in the form of topic sentences that will begin the three body paragraphs. So we're going to follow that same process, but again, this is going to require a lot of reading. In this week, the focus was to become more familiar with using this method for getting new information to uh, take, taking notes based on these articles that we're coming across as it relates to a thesis statement. Right. Uh, I would draw your attention to uh, the Unit 2 essay considerations. We'll talk about this in class, but I think it's worth taking a, a, taking a look at the different aspects that we want to be thinking about as we're developing our essay for Unit 2. All right. If anyone has any questions or has, needs further clarification on the Cornell Method, uh, make sure you're reaching out to me. This is something we'll be working with and talking and discussing a lot more in class as uh, we write our first essay for the semester. All right, so we'll see you all in class.